I'm gonna try. Go look for it tonight. All right. <clears throat> Absolute value functions, excuse me. Absolute value functions. You can always use the little x, y graph thingy to be able to set up and figure out exactly what your x and your y values are by plugging them in and finding and matching them together. But I'm going to show you some shortcuts that we can look at and tell how this thing is shifting around the x-axis, okay? Your standard absolute value graph. standard absolute value function is written f of x f f equals the absolute value of x okay and this little x should be in parentheses but my thing's messed up so I don't even know that where those parentheses are going to show up okay and the graph of that function It's got the vertex of the thing on the origin. The slope here is one to one. The slope here is negative one to one. All right? And that is your standard absolute value function. Now we're going to just take this and we're going to look at different types of equations and then we're going to move it around so in order for. What's that? It's still going to be a V all the time. The V might shift to the left or the right, it might shift up and down, it might get fatter or it might get skinnier, but it's always a V. And today we're gonna to look at how do we, how do you tell what it's doing and how this thing is moving around. So first off, let me uh, group these little things together so I can move them as one. Okay, so now when I wanna move it, I can move the whole thing. Okay, say we take this equation and we put it in, we put this, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1. Okay. Yes. Don't call for you. The absolute value of x plus 1. Now what does this do? This is still in the form y equals mx plus b, okay? So the slope of my lines are still one to one, but now the vertex of this thing is crossing the y-axis at positive one. So by simply placing a number in the b location of this equation or this function, that shifts the graph either up or down because it tells you where the vertex lies in reference to the y-axis. So this is the graph of that function. The slope of your lines are still one to one. So as it goes from corner of a box to a corner of the box, it's just going to the very next corner, okay? Same thing over here, it's a reflection. The other side's exactly the same. One's not gonna be steeper than the other. They're gonna be exactly the same. The slope is one, the y-intercept is positive one. And so all that did was shift the graph up one on the y-axis. Suppose we say minus two. Well, we start back with our original because here is our original function with the vertex on zero and the slope of one to one. What's the slope of this function that I have at the bottom? One on one. It's still one to one, but now the vertex is where? Number two. On negative two on the y-axis. So this is the graph of that function. This 
This is, no, I'm gonna get to what other things can happen, okay? Right now, we're just focusing one thing at a time. So the number behind this, outside of the absolute value brackets, tells you the y-intercept. It tells you where it's crossing the y-axis, okay? All right, now, suppose we say, value x. Plus zero is understood. Plus zero is understood. The vertex of this thing has not shifted above or below the y, the x-axis. It's still at zero. But the slope has changed. My slope is no longer one over one. Now my slope is two over one. Which means as I go up two, Let's see how I can do this. Here we go. I go over one. As I go up two, where is it? One, two. over one, okay? So, my vertex is still at zero, but the slope of each line is now two over one. So as I rise two, one, two, I move over one. There's the next point. One, two, over one. One, two, over one. Look on this side. One, two, one. One, two, one. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. How do we graph? How do you go up to it? How do you graph that? Just like that. You go, you start at zero. Okay. I need to show you that because you're not going to have a V that you can yeah. play with. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, you do. We start with where is it in relation to the y-axis, which is not there. <coughs> okay? And then we find points on either side, okay? Mm -hmm. My slope is 2 over 1, so I move up 2 and then I move out 1 on both sides. And from those two points, I will move up two and out one. Up two and out one. This is an 